The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it. They know. They took that one step beyond. Here in this warm, secure London house, early April 1912, began the bizarre and untold chapter of a new story that would soon stun the civilized world. In this library was an unread book. Coming events cast their shadows before them. Maybe. Remember this book. We'll come back to it later. It might shock you. What's wrong, dear? It was water. Dark water. I was drowning. I couldn't swim anymore. I was drowning. Oh, oh, oh. you just had one of those old-fashioned nightmares. Oh, no. I don't blame you all this excitement about the wedding. No oh, wonder. It Frank was there. And I couldn't find him in the dark. And the water closed in over me. What does it mean? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And in four days you'll be married and in Switzerland on your honeymoon. The happiest bride that ever was. And you can't drown in Switzerland. Nobody ever does. All they do is bang into trees on those foolish skis. But drowning? <laughs> no. It was all so clear to me. And I could feel... The water it was like ice. Now, if you must dream, I order you to dream only pleasant things. Eric, your wedding dress, and how happy you're going to be. Promise? That's better. Now, come on back to bed. But I couldn't find him. I couldn't Now, find that him. is enough, darling. And I shouldn't worry, Eric, with this. You've been trying so hard to make everything wonderful for you. There. No. Good night, dear. And no more nightmares. Good night. Good morning, Emily. Is the future Mrs. Farley about? Grace? Eric! Well, I know it's early, but I wanted to see what my wife would look like in the mornings. Ugly. <laughs> would you like some coffee, darling? I'd love some. You like surprises, don't you, darling? I love them. Come on, surprise me. It's about our honeymoon. The honeymoon? We're not going to Switzerland. We're not? Well, where are we going? We're going to America. To New York City. New York? Eric. Now, why don't you ask me how we're going to get there? Swim? Rowboat? Raft? All right, darling, how? That's how. State from 111B, boat deck right next door to Mr. and Mrs. John Jacob Astor, no less. On the maiden voyage of His Royal Majesty's ship, Titanic, Southampton to New York, six days at sea, next Tuesday. At sea? Oh, just a little sugar, darling. I, I can't believe it. I can hardly believe it myself, but the office has connections. Oh, oh you lucky children. 
You're sure you went with Switzerland? Oh, Switzerland will keep. For the Titanic, for our honeymoon. That's once in a lifetime. The paper's full of nothing but the Titanic. Listen to this, Grace. RMS Titanic, the world's largest and most luxurious liner, is writing a new and glamorous chapter in man's conquest of the sea. By virtue of her five watertight compartments, she's being hailed in marine engineering circles as the unsinkable ship. Her first passenger list makes her a floating home for royalty, statesmen, international society, and stars of the theater and the arts. And, and Mr. and Mrs. Eric Farley, who are absolutely unknown. And absolutely in love. What is it, darling? What is it? Must. We can't go on that ship. It happened again. I dreamed. Now, now, darling, I do wish you wouldn't. I saw the sea, the cold sea. Oh. There were people struggling in the water. Really? Thinking, dying. Grace. And then a huge ship slid down. Down. Now, it's just a bad dream. Besides, that ship couldn't be the Titanic. The Titanic can't sink. Everyone knows that. I saw a lifeboat tossing in the water. There were letters on the side of it. I saw. Really? So clearly I saw the word Titanic on the side of the boat. I did. 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 Your intuition should tell you that what you see next is not a dream. It can come true. Just what I've always wanted. <laughs> Only my own dear Aunt Agatha would have guessed. Have you ever kept birds, my darling? No, neither have I. You ever thought of keeping birds? Neither have I. Then by all means, write dear Aunt Agatha and tell her she's made us very, very happy. I will. I know all about last night, and the night before that. Mother told you. I suppose you think I've gone off my head, one of the silly, hysterical women. I think you're a lot overtired and a little over-imaginative. But this isn't my imagination. Believe me, I saw it, I saw it. Now, that is silly. You don't believe what you see in your sleep? I mean, unless you're a gypsy. Grace, do you trust me? You know I do. And don't spoil the happiest time of our whole lives just because of a bad dream. Everything's going to be all right, I promise. I'll take care of you always. Oh, hold me tight, darling. You know, if I didn't know you so well, I'd think that you'd fall in love with another man, that you didn't want to marry me. Well, I couldn't love anybody but you. Very well, I believe you. Only remember, if there ever is another man, I was one of the best shots in the Coldstream Guard. days of my 
Ah, lovely you are. And they're young. Could be even better days. Forgive me, haven't you, for the silly scenes I made? I've forgotten the whole thing. I'm glad. Such awful, ridiculous dream. It wasn't a dream at all. I was wide awake when I felt there was something wrong with the ship. Quite wrong. I know you'll laugh. And I don't blame you. I was in my cabin this afternoon. I imagine it was around four o'clock and I heard this terrible sound. What kind of sound? It was a terrible grinding sound, as though the ship had suddenly struck some immovable object. The whole boat seemed to tremble with the impact. Tell me, by any chance, did you hear anything or feel anything? No, no, I heard nothing like that, I'm happy to say. You know, it's probably your imagination, or uh, more likely, indigestion. <laughs> Now, why don't you see the ship's doctor? He's a good man, I'm told. I'm all right physically. It's just that for the first time in my life, I'm... I'm afraid. I'm afraid even for the next few hours. I don't know what I'm afraid of. It's as though something in my... In my soul. You know, if I weren't such a hard-headed realist and I were at home, I think I'd call on my minister. As the mighty ship raced through the Atlantic night, there were others far away who felt dark premonitions of disaster. For one, a Methodist minister in Winnipeg, Canada. Excuse me, Dr. Morgan, but it's nearly time for the service. Miss Parsons, I'd like the congregation to sing hymn number 446 four, tonight. But, Dr. Morgan, the hymns for tonight are already posted in the church, and the organist... To... Please, 446. Four, I didn't know that was one of your favorite hymns. It isn't. I don't even know the words. I simply know that we must sing it tonight. Dear Father, while we pray to thee for those in peril on the sea, better we should be praying for our farmers after winter like this. Yeah. 